Good morning everyone and welcome to a new vlog. Uh, not long till the end of term actually, it's probably around about uh, around about nine days or so. Um, so just think about that for a moment. Um, today's plan, for this morning at least, is to just read a bit more of my book and maybe just organise a few things on my laptop. So I've just been to the shops to get a few things in. I'll just turn the camera, uh, you may be able to see some uh, preparation going on, this is for our May ball uh, that is tomorrow evening, more on that later. I'm um, going to just read a bit of my book uh, and then I need to go to the union uh, for something on uh, this evening. I am in my formal clothes because there's a debate on tonight at the union, so this house believes that international organisations have failed to meet today's challenges. And I am guest liaison for two uh, speakers today. So Dame Rosalind Higgins, who is a former president of the International Court of Justice, and uh, Sir Richard Jolly, an assistant, a former assistant secretary general uh, of the UN. Um, so th I'm looking forward to this debate. This debate should be really good. Uh, so I need to head down now and uh, meet them at the union. So just to give a bit of a breakdown on last night, uh, first of all, the debate was really good. Uh, some very uh, good and interesting points being made by both sides of the debate. And I did actually make a floor speech. So with these debates at the Union, there's an opportunity after one proposition and one opposition speaker for members in the audience uh, to give a floor speech for a minute. And I did decide to do that. Um, I didn't really have the intention to do it at the beginning, but I was thinking during the debate, should I, should I, and I did decide in the end, and I'm glad I did so. In terms of the guest liaison, that went well, and the people I was um, guest liaison for uh, were really nice people, really good and interesting uh, individuals to talk to. Uh, afterwards, there was a union social um, for, for all members of the committee, um, and we also gave thanks for uh, outgoing president and vice president, and there was karaoke as well, which was fun. Uh, then came back. It was very late at that point, um, hence why I'm recording uh, now. In terms of today, quite a busy day. There's a mere ball on this evening. Something um, quite um, quite important. Uh, but beforehand, uh, there's a few things happening. First of all, go and go get some breakfast. And then afterwards, um, read a bit of my book and just organise a few things uh, in my room. So I've been this morning buying some of the books that I need for next year from the second year. So you can see land law there, contract law and international law and some of the modules that I will be taking for second year. This afternoon I'm going to head into town, there's a couple of things I need to do there. One thing is to retrieve uh, something I left at the Union yesterday, so I'll do that. And then there's, like I said, a couple of things I need to do. And then obviously I need to come back and obviously get myself prepared for the May ball. So yes, I was able to gather the item that I did leave behind at the Union. And I did a couple of things whilst I was uh, in town. Um, you may notice that I am in my formal attire again. The reason for that, it is our May ball this evening. Um, so let me just explain. So after exams, there is what is known as May week. And this is where all the May balls and garden parties, things like that, happen. Um, May ball is the biggest, uh, biggest social event, biggest event. Most cultures have one each year. Um, and it's just a good opportunity for picking your friends to just celebrate end of exams, you know, end of the academic year as well. Um, so there'll be uh, there's various things on. They've been obviously preparing for a while, for a couple of days now. Looking forward to that. I'll be queuing shortly for that, and I'll try to record uh, what I can.
morning. Uh, the May ball was just fantastic. Silent disco, music, food, drink, everything. Uh, it was just fantastic. Really good night. Really good fun. Uh, just It was just brilliant. Um, now, I'll probably just go to bed for a little bit because I am tired, of course. Um, what happens, uh, we've just had a survivor's photo. So survivor's photo is where, if, for all those who've managed to survive the whole night into the new day uh, at the May Bowl. Uh, so I've just had that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I'll go to sleep for a bit. Um, but I've got some things on today. Um, I'll talk about that uh, later. In terms of what's happening today, I've got the Cambridge Union Garden Party which is this afternoon. So I think what I'll do first is head over to Spoons, have something quick to eat, and then queue up at Sydney Sussex College, which is where the garden party is. I'm looking forward to this uh, garden party. Not quite sure what's happening or what's on, but I'm sure it'll, I'll have a good time. I did have a good afternoon at uh, Sydney Sussex College for the Cambridge Union Garden Party. There was laser tag, there was food, there was music. It was really good. Uh, uh, and also, I got this done here. Uh, so there was a gentleman um, who was cutting out uh, silhouettes uh, of us. So we would have to stand and he would cut a silhouette of us. And you can see mine there it's quite impressive quite detailed um the way he's done it and uh, very much attention to detail uh but yeah like i said it was just a really good uh garden party probably now i'll get something for dinner and just maybe do a couple of things in terms of editing videos and things like that i've managed to get the editing done but i'm probably going to go to bed uh, in a moment because i'm still tired from the maple and it's been quite a busy day today with the garden party. I did sleep in a bit, um, but I think it was needed. Um, Sunday, so I think the first thing that will probably be happening today is I'll be going over to the hall for Sunday brunch, which will probably be the last Sunday brunch of this year. Now there's something I need to do in town for the union, so I'm probably just going to stay in town and then go to the Cambridge Cardboard Boat Race. Uh, so again, this is another thing to celebrate the end of exams. Teams of students put together uh, some kind of cardboard boat and try to race them. Uh, hopefully, you know, provided of course that they are able to float and not sink. So that should be good uh, this afternoon. And then this evening, um, not fully sure what I'm doing, but there is uh, certainly there's a speakers event on uh, at the union. Uh, and I think... For that, it's all hands on deck. So the boat race was good fun. As you probably saw there, some ships were successful, some weren't. Uh, but it was just overall good fun. The designs of the ships were quite creative. Uh, yeah, like I said, it was just good fun. Uh, afterwards, uh, there was something on at the Union. It was the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Uh, he was interesting and 
listening to him uh, the event of well pretty much went uh, as planned uh, now I'm heading to what has been uh, referred to as spirited discussions I've just come back from spirited discussions uh, basically what that was was an opportunity for us to uh, debate and discuss uh, some motions that we had selected so whether for example uh, we would allow Scotland to have another independence referendum uh, so there was like proposers and opposers to that motion and that was good and there was you know, there was drink of oil and there was food as well I did briefly spend some time in spirits afterwards with a couple of people who were at spiritual discussions but I didn't spend too long there i uh, probably go to bed now, I'm still tired um, I'm so tired uh, from today because you know, there's been a lot on today I think what I'll do this morning is first of all go to the butchery and get something for breakfast and then afterwards uh, get on with my book and see how far I can get through that hopefully I can get through that by the end of this week which would be brilliant so it's been relatively a uh, quiet morning uh, just been reading my book I'm probably going to go and get something for lunch now uh, and have that uh, but there is also something else that I need to do as well So welcome back to the Law Snapshot segment. Uh, I thought this time we would look at one of the defences available in criminal law, and that is insanity. Um, now, insanity, the main criteria comes from a ruling in Minorton uh, back in 1843, and there are basically four elements to it. The first part is that there's a presumption that you are sane, and that's important because what that means for in terms of trials is, is that it's for the defence to show that the defendant in question has the elements required for the defence of insanity. The first specific requirement of insanity is that you need to have a disease of the mind. Basically a disease of the mind is some kind of internal condition. Uh, that could be epilepsy, it could be um, sleepwalking has been classified as an internal condition in one case. It can also include physical conditions, so, so an internal condition doesn't necessarily have to be a mental, it could actually be a physical one. There's a case um, involving the hardening of someone's arteries, uh, for instance. So that's the first requirement. The second requirement is that that disease of mind causes a defect of reason. And basically, a defect of reason means it has to cause some kind of cognitive uh, effect. Uh, and we know from the case of Clark that it has to deprive the person of the power of reasoning. And then the final element has two branches to it. So once you've got a disease of mind and, and that leads to this defective reason, it must then lead to the defendant either A, not knowing the nature and quality of the act, i.e. what they are doing, so uh, how they're doing it or the way in which they're doing it, or, that, or secondly, it affects their ability uh, to, the, to the where they do not know that what they are doing is wrong. And by wrong... Uh, we know from Minorton that that means legally wrong. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you thought it was morally right to do. Um, if it was legally wrong, um, then depending on whether, whether you knew it or not, would depend on obviously if you satisfy that requirement. So those are the three elements that obviously follow on from it. So you've got this presumption, and then you've got these three elements. Uh, obviously, if the defence shows, can see that the defendant does have these three elements, then the insanity defence uh, may well be raised. It's unlike duress, where if you satisfy the defence, you could be acquitted, that doesn't happen in insanity. With insanity, the jury would return a, a verdict of a special verdict of not guilty by reason of insanity. Um, and what that basically means is we recognise that you weren't fully in control of your actions when you committed X crime. However, the circumstances may it would not necessarily be appropriate for you to be acquitted. And so what happens is, in legislation um, recently amended by the D Domestic Violence Crime and Victims Act of 2004, is there are some options available to the judge. Uh, so, for example, they can issue an order for absolute discharge, or they can issue a hospital order. And these are just devices that, allow, that give a little flexibility to the judge. Um, so that's the defence of insanity. Uh, I ho hope you found that interesting. If you have, comment in the comment section below with your thoughts, your ideas of what you want me to 
look at? Is there anything you've noticed uh, in, you know, in the law uh, or noticed in the news that might, I might be able to answer? You know, let me know. Uh, yeah, I hope to see you in what probably will be the last uh, law segment um, for this academic year. And with that segment comes the end of part one, but do not worry, uh, the rest of May week and my uh, final days here in Cambridge for first year will be in part two. But if you if you have enjoyed part one, don't forget to give it a like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to share the video, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. You could also subscribe to the channel by clicking here, and you can see my previous video by clicking here. And I hope to see you in part two.